Okay, there we go. Now we're recording. So we're going to go ahead and cover linear equations. Now just one quick thing, the video is only going to record what I write on this paper because it's the only thing that's picked up from the camera. However, in class, on the screen you see up there, I'm going to be toggling back and forth between Alex and then the camera, okay? Because I need to go get the problems from Alex, mm -hmm. I'll write them down here, which will still be recorded, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'll put it back on the screen. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, okay. So the six steps to solve all of them is one, eliminate... Parentheses by using the distributive property. I can't spell, which is why I got into math. Distribute. How do you spell distributive? D I S T R. I think this, right? <laughs> I don't know. I rely on autocorrect a lot. <laughs> okay, good. So, and then that's the one where if you see the parentheses, you take what's on front of it, right? You just multiply it to everything inside, okay? So that's what the distributive property is. We'll see some examples in a little bit. The second thing is to separate... and eliminate fractions by multiplying no yes oh. each term Good one, bro. Good. by the LCD least common denominator right now the reason why I say separate is because sometimes you might see um, things that look like this, right? And so when I say separate, it means write 3x over 2 and write the 7 over 2 before you start trying to multiply each term by the common denominator. It just makes it a little bit nicer, okay? A little bit easier to work, work through. So that's what I mean by separate. I'll give you um, the example on how to eliminate once we get to the example part. Okay, hold on. Before you sure. before you go, so you're saying before I start, uh, start solving my problem, I should break it down like that and write it in your three x over two. If you're on step two yeah. and you and you have something that looks like this, correct. This is not a single fraction. No, ma'am. Right? No. So separate it into single fractions first. Okay, separate into. Single and single then you can eliminate. Okay. Okay, good. I just don't want to go too fast. <laughs> then what you'll do is, and only if you can do these things. Sometimes you don't have to do any of it. You can jump straight to the last step, okay? It just depends on what you see in your problem. So combine like terms on each side separately. What that means is you've got your equal sign. Your equal sign is the fence. Okay, so on each side of that fence, on each side of that equal sign, if you have things that can be combined, then combine them. Okay, then go look on the other side and see if things can be combined over there. It doesn't mean to cross people over the equal okay, sign. Okay, so you're basically like one side, say you got, you know, 12u minus 2, and then you got 3u. You're going to combine that 12 and that 3 only? No, on one. that's what I mean. <laughs> What I mean is if I have 3x plus 5x plus 7 plus 10 on one side, right. then combine the x's together and the numbers together on that one that's side. What, so that's what I'm saying. If you have yeah. that on one, you'll never have a, a problem like that on one side? You may. You may have that like this. Let's just let me put a little thing up here. So this is not what I mean. This is already com like terms combined. Right, right. Uh, this problem, I would not do step three. Okay. Okay. However, if I had a problem like this, 
Here, I would have to combine like yeah, terms yeah, on the side, left side, on right? The, yes, ma'am. That's what I mean. Okay. Two, okay. Two, so you. this kind of thing is the situation okay, for step three. Two. Okay. Right. So look at each side of the fence, each side of the equal sign separately. Okay. So only look at the left and see if you have like terms to combine. Then look over to the right hand side and see if you have like terms to combine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Once you have that, your equation is going to look like this, right? Where yes. you have just x's, mm -hmm. one constant on one side, just x's, and one constant on the other side. So then that's when you need to start moving things around. So first move all variables to one side. I like the left side, but really it doesn't matter which side. So if you want to move the 3x over to the right-hand side by minusing 3x Minus over, 3X, yeah. that's totally okay. Yeah. I like to move the 2x over to the left-hand side. Always I move the x's to the left. And the reason why is because in the end, I just wanted to say x equals something. So okay? The left I always go to the left, but it, uh, it really doesn't matter. And it truly doesn't matter when you only have one x in the whole equation and it's already on the right-hand side, right? It's really stupid to... <laughs> put an extra step and move it. So say, yes. so say for me, remember I was telling you the other day how I wasn't capitalizing my letters mm -hmm. and stuff, so say that I don't move that X on to your left and I leave it like it right. is. That won't change my answer. No, it just means your answer will look like it this will look instead look, of looking like that. Yeah, it will be backwards. That's the only I'll difference. Right. The answer's still two, though. Right? Yes, it, it doesn't yes. make a difference. Okay. The only thing that's important is, is if you move all your variables to one side, that means you need to move all the constants to the other side. So this word other is very significant, okay? If I chose to move the x's to the left, then that means all my constants need to be over here on the right-hand side. Or vice versa, if I chose to put all my x's on the right, then all my constants need to be on the left, okay? So it just depends on what you chose for number four, that's gonna affect what you do on number five, okay? Mm -hmm. And the last step always is what? Does anybody know? I say, recheck your work, I guess. Not yet, I haven't finished solving. Divide. Divide. Okay. By, and here's a fancy word, but this one's one you're gonna have to get used to. <laughs> Divide by coefficient, okay? Coefficient is just the number in front of x. That's all that big word means. Okay. Coefficient just means the number in front, in front of, x. of x. The one that's like multiplied by x. Okay. So whatever it is, you divide by that. If it says negative 2x, then you need to divide by that negative 2. Okay. The whole entire coefficient. If you remember that, it'll save you from doing the wrong things here. Now notice. We have hit everything. These two steps, you're going to have to multiply, right? Isn't the distributive property multiplying? Yes, ma'am. And right here, I said multiply yeah, yeah. by the LCD, right? Yeah. Here, it says combine like terms. That's adding and subtracting. When you're moving stuff over, aren't you doing the opposite sign? But you're still adding and subtracting, right? Here, still adding and subtracting. And then finally, lastly, I divide. So I hit all of the operations that I need to hit in order to solve an equation. Okay, and those are the only things that are going to be happening in linear equations is adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. That's it. You won't see exponents or square roots or anything else weird. So you can follow <coughs> these steps, no problem. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to go over to my screen and I'm going to pull up. Oh, I got to find myself first. There we go. I'm gonna pull up the topics that are inside here. Now, I'm probably not going to have time to go through every single one, but I'm gonna to try to get through a good number of them, especially ones that are similar to each other, okay? Get one in that whole group and we should be okay. So, that's combining like terms. Let's see this one. Okay. Let me just write this problem down. So I'm going to do my examples on the next page. Um, I kind of want to tear that out. I have them here, but shortcutted. Can you see that? So my shortcut is eliminate parentheses, separate and eliminate fractions, combine like terms, left and right separate. 
Move variable terms, bless you. <laughs> Move constant terms and then divide, right? So this is just like a shorthand version of all of this, okay? It's just less detail. So I'm gonna use that to go through all of my six steps when I get to my examples. So here, let's see this question, example one, I'll call it u minus three over three, bless you, five over two. So do I have, oh, I pushed the wrong button. There we go. Do I have parentheses in this problem? No. 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 So I'm going to skip step one mm -hmm. because there's no parentheses. Okay. Now right now I'm writing all this out, but eventually I don't write these, okay? And I really don't have to since the thing's recording me, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm writing it down. Yes, ma'am. Could you do it, please? Okay, yes, sure. So step one, I'm going to skip. Now step two says separate and eliminate fractions. Well, first, do I have to separate fractions? Is this a situation where I need to separate? No, because they're already to separate sides. That's not what I meant when I said separate. Well, there's two you over have to, three and three. Maybe three over you three have, three three have two people one. over one guy, don't you? that's not separated okay that's what we mean when we say separate okay so i do have to separate this here and we're going to do that by doing u over three minus three over three and then this is already just one fraction so he's okay now i'm not done with step two that's only like the first half of step two right the second part says also to eliminate the fractions which means i need a common denominator in order to do that Six. Mm hmm if they don't have anything in common just multiply them. I always just multiply them all together and it may not be the lowest common denominator but it'll still work <laughs> okay so if you can never think of the common denominator just multiply them all together and that'll be your common denominator okay here somebody said six and that's correct that is the lowest common denominator right that's two or three mm -hmm. so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take six and I'm gonna multiply it to each term so every single term has to get multiplied by six. Now, how does that eliminate the fractions, okay? You can do it two ways. I prefer one version, but you could always do it the second version, okay? I'm gonna show you the long way first, and then I'll show you how I do it short and simple. The long way would be to put six u over three minus 18 over three equal to 30 over two. Notice how I just multiplied the tops by six. Yes, ma'am. Right? Nope. Then you simplify this. You get two u minus six equal to 15. Did that not get rid of all of the fractions? Right? A faster way to do it without having to write this line down requires you to scribble over here, okay? So it's another way to do it, and this is the way I usually do it, but if you have to do it this way, that by all means, go for it, right? this makes sense to you do it what I do is I say three goes into six how many times two. Twice. Yeah, twice three two. goes into six twice, twice. and two goes into six three times, three times. Yeah. and then what I do is I multiply the leftovers so all I have left over here is two and you which is two you all I have left here is two times three which is six and then all I have left here is three times five which is 15 you see what I did you get the same thing it does not matter which way if this makes more sense to you please do that okay if this helps you back like you do that in your brain and you can get here that's fine too okay uh, can i ask yes. you a question because this sure. is something i've been working on with that you know how you have that six uh-huh now i'll take that six and i'll write it over one that's perfect that's okay, okay. Cool that. Cool mm -hmm. that. all right yes, you can always put a whole number over one okay. like this yes ma'am and, and then, that helps then i'll do my breakdown Okay. And that helps just so people know not to multiply the six right, by the bottom. Right. There you go. Mm -hmm. okay. That is okay. Okay, from here, so step two we've done. We've separated the fractions, right? And we eliminated these fractions here by getting this equation, okay? I'm going to go run off of this one just because I'm going to keep on my one side. Now, the set third term says, or the third step says to combine like terms. Do I have like terms on my left-hand side? No, I have use and, and no use, right? <laughs> Do I have like terms on the right-hand side? 
one it's guy. just one guy. That's it. So we cannot do step three. So we have to skip step three. We have no like terms on left and no like terms on the right. So step four says to move all the variables to one side. Do we need to do that? Yeah, you're going to put plus six and plus six. No, variables. Oh, variables no, 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 no. are variables is a fancy word for what? Letters. letters okay. So do we need to move our letters to one side? No. no. You only have one letter, right? <laughs> it's already on a side, right? <laughs> so we can skip step four. All letters are on the left so we don't need to worry about it they're already all together okay step five is to move all the constant terms to the other quote unquote other side right so if my user on my left that means my numbers need to be on the right hand side so you're right this guy has to move over there and how do you move them you do the okay, opposite right yes, so we're going to add six and we're going to add six and then what we get is to you by itself because those will wipe out equals 21. equals 21 and then finally step six tells us to what divide. to divide by the coefficient what is the coefficient two right the number in front of the letter is two so divide by two and divide by two we get this and usually they like it to be left as a fraction if you can't reduce it well can you, you put it could in a, put it in a mix 10.5 if it asks Equals for a mix, a then you could put 10 and a half. It just depends on what it wants. But if they don't ask for it? If they don't say anything, I leave them like that. You leave it just like that. Mm -hmm. right, I don't do extra <laughs> if I don't have to. <laughs> People ask me, why do you become a mathematician? Because I'm lazy. That's why. <laughs> okay, so let me minimize that. We'll go grab another question just so you can see how they this same steps will follow all of them. So solving, addition, subtracting, bam, we'll make it hard. We'll do the advanced one. So let me get another. Did everybody get that one? Yeah. That, that yeah. Was easy. Okay. Let me do another example. Oh, this one's solving for a variable. Yeah, That's not the same different. thing. Dun, dun, dun. Solving for a variable in terms of other variables. That's not what I'm trying to hit. Hey, man, that was the hard way. Um... Yeah, normally when you go through the <laughs> equations, eventually you start to, oh, I don't have that, I don't have that. You just need to well, do certain well. things. Yeah, you can cross multiply. There are a whole bunch of different ways you could do it. As long as you're not breaking any rules, it's totally okay. But I just like having one set of rules mm. <laughs> and going yeah. through the, all yeah. of them the same. Then to know, oh, I can cross multiply over here, but over here I can't and so on and so forth. Um, those are word problems. I'm not trying to do your word problems. Go ahead. You know what? I'm looking at this and it wasn't solving equations that y'all were having a hard time with. Because day five looks like it was the one, yeah, that was solving all the equations. Well, then I'm just going to keep going into these guys. So, let's do the solving for one in terms of the other. Here we go, advanced. So this is a little bit different, only because you have multiple letters. So you're gonna have to figure out which one is the quote unquote variable in question, okay? What, you, what do they want to solve for what? Uh, they want me to Z. solve for Z. Solve for Z. So solve for Z. Now I could go through all my same steps. The only thing is, is you have to remember that Z is your quote unquote variable in this problem. So all the other letters, you're going to look at them as if they were just regular numbers. Okay. Just pretend regular numbers. So I don't have any parentheses to get rid of. I don't have any fractions to get rid of. I don't have any like terms because even though, um, these guys do not have Z's on them. This one does not have a Y and that one does, right? Mm -hmm. So these are not like terms. So I can't combine like terms. Over here, there's only one letter, so I can't combine like terms either. Now it says to move my variables to one side. 
the z, the variable in question, is there's only one, and it's already on a side, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then the next step is where I start getting busy. The next step says to move all quote unquote constants to the other side. Basically what it means to me is all non-Z people need to move to the other side, okay? So that means I'm going to be doing the opposite of this guy, which is minus 11. Do the opposite of this guy, which is add Y. And I'm gonna do the same on the right-hand side, right? It's like a balance beam, you gotta keep it balanced. If you take something off or add something on one side, you need to do the same thing on the other side. So that's gonna wipe these guys out. And I'll have Z over here. But these are not like terms, so I can't mesh them together. They're just stuck A minus 11 plus Y, okay? And the, calcul the computer, as um, Elliot and I figured out, that they are very picky about whether you're using lowercase yeah. or capital letters, okay? And the reason is, is because later you might have lowercase b and capital B, and they represent two totally different things. So if you use one letter wrongly, you're gonna end up with the wrong solution. Does that make sense? So be careful and make sure you pay special attention to which case they're using for their variables, okay? If they use little z, you have to type in little z. Okay, let's get another one. I'm sure we're gonna end up in some word problems. Let's do multiplication or division advanced. I'm gonna do all the advanced ones. Advanced just probably means there's more than one thing happening. Like instead of just having one term, they had two terms, right? So instead of multiplying just by one thing, they're multiplying by two things here. And I keep forgetting which letter, G. So solve for G. So I want this guy right here by himself. That means who do I need to get rid of? 10 and 8. Uh-huh. And right now they're multiplied, aren't they? Yes, ma'am. How do you do the opposite of multiply? Divide. Divide. So I'm going to have to divide by the 10 and the H and do the same on this side, 10 and H. So that'll cancel out my 10s. That'll cancel out my Hs. G will be all by himself. And then your E over 10 H. And again, these are not the same letters, so I can't make them look any prettier. They're not going to reduce or simplify or anything like that. It's just going to stay like that. So when they're one step problems, it may not be convenient to go through all six of the steps, but if I went through all six of the steps, there's no parentheses. Um, I could do the, f no, there were no fractions at the beginning, right? That was the problem. That's the problem right there, right? No fractions, yeah. right? Yeah. There were no like terms on each side. Mm -hmm. All the variables, my G's, this big fat term and it's already on a side all by itself there were no constants over here with it that had to move and then the last step was divide right so I could go through all of them but I recognize this one's just a one step problem let's keep going because there were some other ones I'm gonna actually try to tackle the ones that have I have to be careful with my cursor <laughs> You see these little bars that says progress, remaining. Ah, see, that's what I didn't want to do. Stop it. Because it'll out people <laughs> if I scroll over it or if I touch it. So I have to be careful. What I need to do is find the ones that are high percent in ready to learn. Because that means that 56% of you haven't done that particular problem. Okay? So I'm going to concentrate on those with the high percentages. And then I'll start going lower. So it looks like 56 is the highest. So I'm gonna do those two that have 56, which is this one and that one up there. Up there. Where? Come on down, come on down, come on down. Down, right, right down. There. Come on, go up. Go up. Ah, yes. Yeah, right there. Okay, yeah. we'll yeah. do that one then. Yeah, I just have to be careful not to touch the percent. Because okay. then it'll tell me who those 67% people are. Okay, so I'm gonna click on this one. And I'm gonna write that down, holy moly. I'm gonna try my best. I am not a drawer person. I can draw if you give me like hours and hours, but not if I have to do it real quick. So Z, V, Y, X, W, and then we have 10, 2X, 11, 
And what does it want me to do? It says perimeter of the Pentagon is 59 units. And then it says find the length of VW. Write your answers without variables. So they just want numbers. Okay. Oops. I'm going to put it over here. So this is the problem that I have. They told me, I just wrote it in symbols, right? They told me the perimeter is 59 units. So I wrote P, perimeter, is 59 units. And then it said, find the length of VW with the bar over it. Where'd you get that 3X minus 3 from? It was in the picture. Oh, okay, I didn't see that, I'm sorry, okay. Mm -hmm. So perimeter means what? It's geometry here. So what does perimeter mean? Mm-hmm. So you're basically just walking all around, right, and counting how far you walked. So when you're doing that, you're adding everything up together, right? So we're going to do 2x plus 11 plus x minus 1 plus 3x minus 3 plus 10 equal to 59. So see, these six steps don't help me to set the equation up, but from here, I can use the six steps to solve it, okay? So there's no parentheses, no fractions. Are there like terms on any one of the two sides, left and right? There's a whole bunch on the left side, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm gonna ask, and I don't know if this is a dumb question or not. So you started at the top. What mm -hmm. if I started and said 10 plus 2x plus 11? It won't matter. Okay. You there could you go, go here, 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 so here. You don't where I start at, as long as right. I write it all out. As long as you okay. get all five, yeah. Okay, because once you do the next step and you combine your like Give terms, up. yours is going to look the look same as mine. Like okay. mm -hmm. The only thing you have to do is make sure that wherever you start, you stop that same spot. Don't leave somebody out, right? Yes, ma'am. So I chose to start at Z and walk all the way around. Mm -hmm. You could have chose to start at W and walk all the way around, but just make sure you get everybody all the way. So my light terms, let me use the color here. I got 2x, 1x, and 3x. So how many x's do I have? 6x. 6x's. And then my letters, no, I'm sorry, my constants, I have 11, negative 1, and 10. What's 11? Take away 1. 10. Plus 10? 20. Is 20. So I have positive 20. Then do I need to move variables to one side? Numbers? Yeah. Variables? No, right? There's only one x there. He's already by himself on one side. So I need to move the constants. Did you have a question? Oh, I didn't see him. Good oh, catch. I did. I forgot the three. Did. No, did. Yeah, we forgot that. So what's 20 minus 3 then? 17. Good catch. So that should be it, right? <laughs> now we're good. So we, our variables are already together and on one side, but our constants are not. I have a constant 17 on the left side and I have a constant 59 on the right side, correct? Yes, I want to move this so that this guy can be alone. So how do I move the 17 over there? 17 from So then that makes the 17 go away, and I have 6x all by itself, and what is 59? 42, 42. Thank you. Eight and then the last step? Divide, x is 7. Always divide. So I'm going to put a little arrow because I ran out of room over there, and I get 7. Okay. Am I done with the problem? Am I going to type 7 in the answer box? No. No. Good. Why? Did they ask me to find x? Mm -hmm. No, they asked you to find the length of v and w. Uh-huh. Where's V and W? At the bottom. Right here. This one's V and W, this right? One. And I don't know what the length is. I have an expression for it. But that expression uses X, doesn't it? So I can still compute it. I just have to do some more work. So the length of V and W... <coughs> excuse me. Mm-hmm. 21 minus, Nine. nope, minus 3. It's only 3 times x. It's not 3 distribute to this. There's no parentheses there, right? Okay. So then I get, what is that? 18? Is it 18? 
18 and 3? Yes, ma'am, 21. The more calculus you learn, the less arithmetic, you know. So <laughs> 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 you use our calculators. <laughs> But this is what they want in that little box, is the 18, not the 7, okay? So always when you're doing your word problems, yes, you want to you know, write out your equation, you want to solve it, but before you start going and plugging in that 7, make sure you go back to the question and read what it is they wanted, okay? Because the word problems will get more complicated in 320, and you're going to definitely need to keep focusing back to see what exactly they're asking you for, okay? So me writing that parenthesis in there is screwed. Yeah, because don't, don't put parentheses. Three, you don't have parentheses up nope. there for the uh, L and W. Or and that's correct. If you put them in the there, wrong then it's place. Be the wrong mm -hmm. Okay, just all right, guys. Right. Yep. So just right all right. All right. Okay, that was the sixty-seven okay. percent, and that might have been some. You might have just been trying to type in this one, and that's why you were getting them wrong, right? So that could have already solved the problem. Um, but let's see. We had some fifty somethings. 56 there we go so let me turn over this is example five now oh god i'm not writing this whole thing down um <laughs> <laughs> i hate writing paragraphs so let's just read it out loud and hopefully whoever's watching the video can follow along <laughs> um, i'll write stuff down but in a minute so it says a total a total of 817 tickets were sold for the school play. Mm -hmm. There were either adult tickets or student tickets. And then it says there were 67 more student tickets sold than adult tickets. How many adult tickets were sold? This one. Okay. There's two sentences here that have numbers, right? Those two sentences are essentially equations, okay? So how would I write the first one? I'm going to go back to the video. How would I write the first sentence, which basically says this. I didn't write the third sentence. But how would I write this, knowing that these tickets are either adult tickets or student tickets? I could conveniently use A and S, right? Yeah, so that I can keep them straight. So how would I get the total if adult tickets is represented by the letter A, and student tickets is represented by the letter S. How would I write this in an, as a math equation? Total of 817 tickets sold. S plus A equals 817. Mm -hmm. S plus A equals 817. Or the other way around, right? A plus S equals 817. Yes, that's how you do it. The next sentence is a little bit trickier. It says there were 67 more student tickets than adult tickets. So I'm going to write that down over here on the side. 67 more student tickets than adult tickets. So I'm just scribbling that down over there on my paper. Okay. You are solving only linear equations, which means everything needs to be in one letter only. You're not allowed to have two different letters because if you do, you can't solve it, okay? So this needs to be in just one letter only. So somebody's gonna have to be X, okay? Who do you want to let be X and it makes no difference? You just have to think about the second one. So I have two options. I'm gonna do both just so you can see that it doesn't make a difference. Okay. So which one you want to be X? Uh, X, as an X-ray. So I'm going to do both. I'm going to say let S equal X, or the students, right? Okay. Equal X. And over here, I'm going to say let A equal X. The adults are going to be X. 
And so I have two different ways to solve their problem, okay? The first way is over here, S. S is now going to become an X. I need to have an expression for A. But this expression needs to use the X as well. I cannot use A. It also has to have an X. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say A equals 67 more than. There's like basically three different options. There's 67 plus X. 67 minus X and X minus 67. These are the three options that I have. I need to figure out which one of those makes sense for this problem. Okay? I don't have X plus 67, right? That's the only other one that's missing because those are the same. X plus 67 or six plus X, 67 plus X, it's the same thing. But when you minus, it does make a difference. Who's behind the minus sign? So 67 more student tickets than adult tickets. More than you want to add. You would think that, but listen to what it's saying. You have 67 more student tickets. So the student tickets should be a bigger number than the adult than tickets, adult. right? So if I add the student tickets to 67, then that means the adults, there's going to be more tickets for the adults. Yeah. So it's definitely not this one, even though it says the word more, okay? Now, we have to think about this. Remember, there's 187 or 817 tickets, right? So would it make sense for it to be this particular problem where I'm going to take 67 minus X? X is probably going to be a huge number, close to like 300 and something, right? Because if I cut this in half, right, that's like each person, each one having like 400 something. They're only different from each other by 67 right. tickets. So they're going to be in the 300s, right? Would it make sense for me to subtract 300 from 67? That's going to put me in the negative, isn't it? So that doesn't make sense. I can't have negative tickets sold. That means somebody stole something, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can't have that. So then it means that A has to be this expression right here. But notice there was a lot of thinking that had to go into that, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I have the expression and now I can solve it. Now there's nothing to distribute here. There's like an invisible one there if you really wanted to think about it. So you don't really need the parentheses. It's not going to change anything. And if I combine my like terms, I have two x's. Minus 67. Mm -hmm. And then if I move my constants over, I have a calculator. I just don't have it with me. There it is. OK. 817 plus 67. Mm -hmm. And then if you define, you get 441. Now, which is that? Because let me go back real quick. What did they ask me for, right? That's what you have to do. How many adult tickets were sold? So X equals the number of student tickets, doesn't it? The way I set it up here, X is the number of student. It's not the one that I want to know. I want to know how many adults there are. So the adults is that X minus 67, which is what? 374. So this should be my answer that I type into that little box. Now, what if my brain worked the other way around? My calculator says 884 divided by 2 is 442. Say it again. It says uh, 884 divided by 2 is um, 442. Your calculator's right. Oh. <laughs> I'm a dork. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. 375 through a soft by one. Thank you mm -hmm. for catching that. Now, on the test, I tell you, when you're going to take the final exam, write down everything, everything.
think. If you're thinking it, write it down. Notice I had all this scribble over here, but I wrote it all down, right? And I wrote everything down. I just didn't put my chicken in scratch and then just put 375, right? <laughs> because if things like that happen to you, like over there where I forgot that one term, right? When you caught that and the other problem, or here where I divided this and I put a one, right? Those are tiny things. The problem's probably worth like 10 to 13 points. That's one point docked off of it versus just getting it completely wrong, right? So it makes a difference. Make sure you're showing everything because if it's one little tiny thing like that, I can give you back almost all your points. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's very important that you start showing everything. And like I said, even if it's a problem you just look at and you know what the answer is, write down what you thought, okay? That way if your thinking was correct, you just made an error, I can still give you credit. If your thinking was completely off, then I'd be like, nope, that's not right. <laughs> and I'll explain what, what the thought process should have been, okay? So same problem, but I wanna do it as if, first of all, what if I had wrote those the other way and I decided to put A in front and then choose A was equal to X, right? I still have the three options for S. I still have that the students could be 67 plus X, they could be 67 minus X, or they could be X minus 67. The pluses you don't have to write down twice, they're the same, okay? But the minuses you do. Now remember, there are 67 more student tickets. So if this is the adult tickets, does it make sense for me to add 67 to get the number of student tickets? If I'm supposed to have 67 more student tickets, my student ticket number is supposed to be bigger than my adult numbers, right? So does the plus make sense in this case? If I add it, won't I have more than the adults, right? If I subtract 67, will I have more students than adults? No, I took the 67 of them out, right? So I'll have less. This one doesn't make any sense because we already know it's gonna be 300 and something and I can't subtract 300 and something. It's gonna make a negative, right? So we know that's bad. It's just basically between these two and you have to go back to that statement. There are supposed to be more student tickets. The student number is supposed to be bigger, okay? Paraphrase it if you have to, just to keep it straight in your brain, okay? So this one is going to be the one that I go with, okay? So when I write out this equation, for S, I'm going to use 67 plus X, and for A, I'm going to just use X, right? A is equal to X. Then that's still supposed to total 817. This is not going to come out the same, is it? Oh, yes, it is going to come out the same. I forgot. So combine, yes, 67, 8, 17, minus your 67. What do you get? You have 375 for answer. 8, 17, minus 67 is 750. Divide by 2, yep, and you get 375. Now on this side, on this side, okay, what does X represent? The number of uh, adult, adult uh -huh. tickets. Okay, so okay. this is the adult tickets, right? Yep. And that's what they asked me for. How many adult, adult tickets, tickets are being sold? And it's 375. Is that the exact same thing we got from the other side? Uh, we got 442. No, for adults, oh, what did for we get? Yes, you took away six, six uh -huh. okay. The other one just had a little extra work, work we had to do okay. to get the adults. But either which way you're doing it, you can still get there. Okay? So on all of these problems, there's going to be two different ways you can do it. You just have to make sure that you pick the right version for the one that you chose to go, the path you chose to take. Okay? That's what makes these problems hard because people will mix the two together. They'll say let S equal X and then pick the plus sign. Or they'll say let A equal X and then they'll pick the minus sign. And that's wrong. Always go back to these statements and figure out who's supposed to have more, who's supposed to have less, okay? 
and that'll help you choose which equation to go with okay it's not easy that's for sure <laughs> you just have to sit there and marinate on it a little bit sometimes <laughs> and let it sink in okay before you keep going don't just rush to try to get knock something out okay let's try another one because I know we have some more with dun 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 56 56 I saw one there it is okay let me go to the other side example six okay let me draw my little triangle that says x plus eight is that squared now x plus eight with a degree symbol oh, a degree sign okay uh-huh and then this one is that's the same thing with the 3x, 3x plus, plus 4, plus with, four degree with a degree and then 4x with a degree and it says find the degree measure for each angle <laughs> that's all they give me so but that is enough actually you just have to know something in order to go somewhere so I fit that one in there, but that's the only one I could fit inside the triangle. But they're talking about the angles, right? Not the sides. But we know something as far as geometry is concerned about the angles of the triangle. What will be the total degree of all the angles in a triangle? What should it equal always? Mm -hmm. So all the angles should equal 180. So angle C and D or angle C, I think is how they mark it, plus angle D plus angle E should equal 180. But remember, we said we cannot solve a problem if it has multiple variables, right? We're only doing linear equations, which means we can only solve it if it's all in one variable. But luckily, there's expressions for every single one of those angles, and they all have X, right? So we're just filling it in. This one's gonna be x plus eight. This one is going to be three x plus four. And e is going to be four x. You don't need the parentheses. They're just to tell you that whole thing is in degrees. If they don't put the parentheses then it looks like just the eight is in degrees and you don't know what x is, okay? So it's just a formality. But then how do I solve that? What would be my first step? Add all the x's together. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this guy, this guy, this guy is how many? 8x. Mm -hmm. 8x plus 8. 8x plus 12. 12. Sorry. 8x plus 12 equals 180. Mm -hmm. And then you'll subtract 12 from both sides. 180 mm -hmm. minus 12 is what? 168. Mm -hmm. And then you divide 168 by 8. Mm -hmm. And then x will give you an answer. 21. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. But that's not what it asked. It says find all the angles, the measure of all the angles. So what is the measure of angle C? How do I figure that out? Plug it in. I know that X is 21, right? Okay. So 21 plus 8 is 29. 29. And then if they want, put the little degree symbol. I don't know that they make you do that, but that's it. Then the measure of angle D, well, this is the expression they gave us for D, so that's where I need to plug in my 21. So it's gonna be three times 21 plus four, which is what, 63 plus four, which is 67. Then finally, the measure of angle E, is 4 times my x which means 84 oh, degrees yep. now you can always double check just to make sure they're correct is add them all together and make sure that they equal 180 right Your 29 and 84 mm -hmm. okay. and I do get 180 so That's correct. we're okay but you'll know if you plugged it in wrong over here if they don't add up to be 180 okay, okay. Is there, is there another way, a quicker way you could work that out and figure out what your, you know, knowing that your degrees is 180, so you wouldn't have to go through all of that? Unfortunately, no. Okay, copy that. All right. This is the, this the is, way. <laughs> oh, look. 
like I didn't even see these guys. There were 78s in here. Yeah. Okay, let me get to these 78s over here. Um, where's the first one? Right there? Right oh, here. Yeah. Right here. Oh, these are good. Okay, let's see this one. Let me go example 7 over here. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, it says, at the city museum, child admission is $5.20. And adult admission is $9. On Saturday, Saturday, there were 155 tickets sold. Oh, no. Yeah, we're sold for a total of eleven thirty two point eight zero. One thousand one hundred thirty two and eighty cents, right? I hate saying numbers the way I'm supposed to say numbers. I just go one one three two point eight zero. That's it. And then it says how many child tickets were sold? Okay, so let's go to the little camera. Now I wrote that the child admissions was five dollars and twenty cents. The adults were nine dollars and just nine dollars even, and there were one hundred and fifty-five tickets sold for a total of that. Okay, we're actually starting to get into something that they don't put the label on it here, but they will when you get to three hundred and twenty in college algebra. Okay. And really what this is, it's kind of like when they tell you in, in kindergarten, what's 5 plus triangle equals 10? What should the triangle be, right? Five, 5 plus the triangle equals 10. The triangle should be worth 5, right? Five. Five. That's algebra. They just don't tell you <laughs> that that's algebra in kindergarten, that's addition, right? Though, right? It, well, it's the addition property that's later, right? Oh, okay. The addition property of equality, da, 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 right? If you minus 5 on both sides, you figure out what triangle is. But... Um, they don't tell you that that's what it's called. Well, this problem is actually a system of equations. They just don't tell you it's called the system of equations. They tell you, put the two sentences or put the information all together into one equation. But in order for you to do that, your brain is already going to come up with two different equations. And then you got to put them together. It's exactly the same thing that just happened in the last problem. Okay, we knew the total was eight but then we knew that one was 67 more than the other so we basically had two equations and we put them into one okay this is the exact same thing when it comes to mixtures whether and normally when it comes to money it is a mixture right because how do you get total cost for something if I buy 500 and I just went to a meeting about golf tournament so if I buy 500 golf clubs and it cost me five thousand dollars how are you figuring out how much it cost you I'm going to buy it. no no just, okay, let's say I buy 500 golf clubs and they all cost two bucks each. That's not realistic, but you get an idea. How do you figure out what the total cost is? Right, if you know what I'm buying, right, how many of them, and the cost, you multiply them together, right? That's how you get the total cost of something. Now, I know what the total cost is here, don't I? So I know that I'm going to use letters here. So I'm going to let child tickets be x and I'm gonna let adult tickets be y just to have two letters okay and I know that in order for me to get the one one three two point eight zero that means I'm gonna take five dollars and twenty cents and multiply it for every single child ticket that I sold right so if I sold 500 tickets then I know how that's how much money I made from those kinds of tickets but those are not the only kind of tickets I sold. I also sold adult tickets. So $9 times however many adult tickets I sold. This is essentially the equation you want to solve. We just have a side issue because there's not just one letter. There's two letters, right? So we have to use the other bit of information they gave us. So I've already used all the money, right? 
Now what I need to figure out is how do I use this 155 tickets are sold? So this 155 <clears throat> means that the number of child tickets plus the number of adult tickets will give me my total number of tickets, right? Now, we have to think a little bit. I could minus the y over and get x by itself, or I could minus the x over and get y by itself. We need to figure out which one would make more sense for me to do. One of them, I could do the line in the middle and do it both ways, but one of them will give me my answer right away and I'm done with the problem as soon as I solve the equation. The other one I'll have to go back and analyze and then plug it back in and get the answer, okay? I said let x equal the child tickets, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that what they wanted to know? Yes, ma'am. So if they want to know what the child tickets are, I should probably have my equation with a bunch of x's in it, okay? Remember, this is the equation we want to solve, which means I want it to have nothing but x's. This is my problem right now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is over here, I'm going to get y by itself so that I know what it equals with an x and then I can just substitute it in there, okay? That's called the substitution method, by the way, which you'll, again, you'll see in college algebra. They just don't call it that right now, okay? So I'm gonna minus x, right, on both sides. So I get y equals 155 minus x. This is a representation for the variable y. So instead of using the variable y, I can use what it is equivalent to. Right? So I'm going to say 1132.80 equals 5.20x plus 9.00, and I ran out of room, so I'm going to have to scoot this over. Nine point zero zero times, and instead of y, I'm going to put what it equals. 155 minus x. Now this is the equation that I want to solve. And there's nothing but x's in it now, right? So are there parentheses in this problem? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes you, have to you have to do that first. So 9 times 155. Oh, I'm writing on the wrong number. Minus 9x, right? 9 times x is just 9x. I don't need to put the point zero zero, right? Do I have like terms though? I don't on this side, it's just one guy. Yeah. But do I have like terms on the other side? Yes, ma'am. So 5.20 minus 9. I get negative 3.8x's. And a lot of people will second guess themselves and just stop here and start making changes to their problem and don't do that, okay? Because what's my next step to get all the x's by themselves? Add, add 3.8? No. This is together. You can't get rid of the 3.8 right now. That's just telling me how many x's I have. Oh, you can um, take away... 1395 right. on both sides? You need to move the constant yeah. over. Right. So 1132.80 minus 1395 is 262.2. And these are attached, right? And the last step is to divide to tear them apart, right? To tear off your coefficient. So divide by that coefficient. Same coefficient on both sides. And we get 69. Am I done? Do I have to go back and plug it in? Do I need to go back here and plug it in and minus, minus it from 155? Or do I have what I need? What was the question? It's asking you how many child tickets were sold. Uh-huh. And I know what X is. Is X the number of child tickets? Yes, ma'am. It is. So we are done. 
The last one was adults. <laughs> the last problem was about adults. But this one was for the child tickets. Now, if you had chose to not minus x, you chose to minus the y here, mm -hmm. then that means you would have had x equals something with the y, which means you would have replaced this guy with the 155 minus y, and everybody would have been with y's. And then when you solved, you would have solved for y. But y is the adults, not the children. So then you would have had to go back and figure out what the children was. Okay? So it doesn't matter what you do here. You just have to make sure you pay attention at the end. What letter did you let equal what? This is why it's very important that you label this. Notice on every problem, I have told you what x is, what y is, what a was, what s was, right? Every single problem, I'm telling you what they are so that I can go back and just verify that I have the right guy or the wrong guy, okay? Okay, I know there's more of these big ones with the 70-something. Dun, 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 that one we just did. This one, oh, these are fun. I hate word problems, by the way. <laughs> I do not like them. When I started tutoring, I was really bad at them. Um, I don't think anybody taught me how to figure out problems. They didn't like tell me take it slow and just think it, think about it for a little while first. I would just jump in and just start doing things, <laughs> and usually never the right thing. <laughs> so you really have to go slow with these. You cannot just like, oh, okay, and scribble, scribble. <laughs> you have to really think about it. Okay. Oh, that one sucks. These are these. They're gonna get worse in college algebra, like way worse. So we gotta get it down now, so that when we see them later and they're worse, we can still make some sense of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to write this one down just because this one is not one that you can kind of just go around. So two trains leave stations. And this one, it really does help if you draw. 432 miles apart at the same time. This is the one in the movies, right? In all the movies, they always make fun of these kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the same time and travel toward each other. And then it says one train travels 95 miles per hour while the other travels at 85 miles per hour. How long will it take for the two trains Me. Now, I thought this lecture was only going to be an hour because I thought it was just going to be solving equations, but it's word problems and word problems just by nature take a lot longer. <laughs> Not only am I solving the equation, but I got to read, put it all together, and come up with the equation, right? So these take longer. Um, if I run out of class time and I get don't get to all the meat, all the good ones, um, I will go back to my office and record some more. So when I give you the link to this video, I'll give you the link to the second video. And then you can watch it whenever you have time during the weekend, okay? Um, so I may just do this one and then cut it for the day. <laughs> and then do the rest of them in my office, okay? Just FYI, I sound boring when I record in my office. Because I'm talking to myself, essentially. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. It might be a little bit of a different kind of personality when you, see <laughs> when you hear me in my office. I try to stay lively, but it's not... It's not easy when you're just staring at the wall. <laughs> okay, so let's go into this problem. Now, there is a bit of information that we need to know before we can attack this problem, and that's the formula for distance, rate, and time, okay? That formula is this. 
The way you calculate your distance is by taking your rate times your time, okay? So if I know how fast I'm going and I know how long I'm traveling, then I can tell you how far I went, right? Okay, I like to draw. Some people try to do these problems without drawing, but I am, I'm telling you, I am not the sharpest tool in the toolbox. I can tell you that right now. But I made my way through all the, all the calculus and everything by really desensitizing everything, really breaking everything down and making it visual and doing whatever it is that I had to do so that I could understand it, okay? Um, and that's kind of why I can teach it pretty well. I already know that I have to break it down to like the basic thing, okay? Where some teachers could just look at that and know how to do it, and then they try to teach it that way, and you're like, how in the world did you get all that, you know? So <laughs> so I break it down from the very beginning. I mean, I'm going to be doing some kindergarten drawing here, but <laughs> it's all right, okay, as long as we get to the end. So it says two trains leave the train stations at 432 miles apart. So I'm literally going to draw station one and i'm going to draw station two and how far apart are these guys 432 miles uh-huh 432 miles now it says that depart at the same time okay that's good to know that means their times are probably going to be the same as far as how long they've been traveling and they're traveling toward one another so if I've got, and again, I cannot draw. I'm just going to use a circle because I use a square already. I've got this guy who's a circle train over here, train one, and he's going in this direction, isn't he? Yeah. Right? And then I've got another circle over here, number two. I don't know why I chose those numbers. It really doesn't matter. And he's going in that direction, right? Okay. So one train travels at 95 miles per hour. The other train travels at 85 miles per hour. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna go, okay, this is my first thing. So when you have a problem like that and they're, they're not stating whether, what train one and train two, can you assign? You pick, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. go, ahead, go ahead then. Okay. Which one do you want to be 95 miles per hour? The one on the left or the one on the right? I'll take the one on the right. Okay, so this one's going 95 miles yep. per hour? Yep. Then if they're traveling for the same amount of time, this one's probably going to have gone further than the other one, right? Mm -hmm. So if they were going the same distance, it would make the same rate. It would make sense that they would meet in the middle, right? But, but if one is going faster than the other one, he's going to cross he's that middle ground now. before he meets up with the other one, right. okay? So since you're saying that this one is the 95 miles per hour, and this one would have to be the 85 miles per hour, where they meet is probably going to be somewhere here, okay? And I'm going to put this because they're probably going to crash, right? You just There's only the one rack. Yeah, just okay. get, I mean, I don't know if it's all the way over there right, or closer, right, right. Okay. but I know it's past the halfway mark, right? Yes, because he's going faster. Correct. Okay? So then now what it says, it says, how long will it take for the two trains to meet? So, obviously, this train has traveled some distance, right? I'm going to call that distance one. And this train will have traveled some distance. That's distance two. But I do know something about those distances. What do I know about those distances? Together, right? Together, those two distances will make up the whole track, right? 432. So that gives me my equation. Distance one plus distance two would have to equal the 432. But I wouldn't be able to tell that unless I had the picture. Okay, just me personally. Okay? Now, how do I figure out what the distance one is and what the distance two is? That's when you need this equation in the red. So in order for me to figure this out, I would have to know the first, this guy's rate, and I would have to know his time. I could put a one there if I wanted to. And then here I would have to know this guy's rate and this guy's time. Now I do know the rates. What is train one? This side, train one. 95. What is his rate? 95. 95 miles per hour. And I'm gonna leave that blank. And then what is the second guy's um, speed? 85, and I'm gonna leave that blank. Equal to 432. Notice that up here they said that they leave at the same, same time. time. So whatever variable I choose for this one, that one's going to be the exact same. So if you pick X, 
or you pick T without a little subscript, it doesn't matter, right? I'm going to just put X because it's different from T. So I'm going to put X, and this one should be the exact same thing. And if I multiply that, that's just 95X and 85X equal to 432. So this is my equation, but it looks a little bit prettier, <laughs> right? And then I go through all my steps. No parentheses, no fractions. Ah, do I have like terms? Mm -hmm. I do have like terms. So I get 180x equals 432. So then what's the only step I can do? Divide. Mm-hmm. Two point four, and that would be two point four. Since this was in miles per hour, it would make sense that this is two point four what? Miles per hour. Not miles per hour. It's time. Oh, oh hours. So hours. Because oh. remember, we time. plugged it in for the time. Yeah, plugged in for the time. So X was representing our time. Okay. But you see, I had to draw it right, and if I didn't draw it, I wouldn't even know where to go with it okay so it really does help to draw it when you get to the college algebra stuff it really you're gonna make a chart and that helps and again I'll go through that one because that one's really crazy a lot of the topics in the college algebra I will probably have to go through almost every single one because they are really in-depth okay so when we get to college algebra expect me to do a lot more lecturing than I've been doing like in 410 I mean, we've gone like halfway through 410 without me doing anything right so <laughs> when we get to 410, there's only seven a day that you have to do, but they're big ones, okay? So I'll talk about them, and then you'll be off to try them on your own. Does that 20. make sense? Say it again. Was that 320 or 414? 1414. So when you get there, like I think a week, a week or two before we leave for spring break, we should be in 1414. Mm -hmm. So 320 should be taking us about another three, three and a half weeks, and then we should be in 1414. But I like to take my time with those because they're big, they're heavy. So that's going to be our spring break is at 14, 14. Well, I mean, you could start, you could try to get some done during spring break if you wanted to. <laughs> if not, you can wait till I come back and lecture, but then you got to go full throttle. Do we get a, how does that work? Say it again. Does with what? Spring break work. What do you mean? How do does we, it work? Do we get a week off or? Yes, it's, uh, I think it's March 9th through 12th. It's, that's the Monday through Friday and there's no classes on that. Yeah, week I haven't yet. had a spring break in years, so. I don't oh know yeah, how that works. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We're off. I'm supposed to be off too, but I end up having to work anyway. Okay, um, let's see. I think I'm gonna stop here, but I'm going. Let me stop the video here.